If you want to make good sourdough bread, watch this video. So to feed my sourdough starter, this is what I usually do. The night before I want to make bread, I just take my starter out of the fridge. I usually have about one tablespoon of starter in a jar. And I just feed it in the evening, and then by the morning, it's bubbly, active, and ready to use. So this is how I feed it. First thing I do is add 50 grams of room temperature water to the starter. You can use cold or room temperature water for this because it's going to have a long time to ferment overnight. So if you use too warm of water, it's going to be too active. Then just add in 50 grams of flour. I'm just using the bread flour that I'm going to be using for the recipe. Nothing complicated. 50 grams of flour, 50 grams of water. And then just mix it all till it all comes together and there aren't any dry bits of flour left. Then mark the top of your starter with the rubber band so you can see how much it grows overnight. Then in the morning you should have something like this. My starter more than doubled in size in just about 9 hours. Now it's time to mix all the ingredients together. I just mix them all in the same bowl at the same time. So start with 300 grams of water right to your mixing bowl. There we go. Oh, too much. But 301 is fine. Now it's time to add the starter. So just go ahead and wet your spoon so it doesn't stick to the starter as much and scoop in 100 grams of starter right into the water. This can take a while, so I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. So with the way I feed my starter, 50 grams of flour, 50 grams of water, I'll have just enough starter for 100 grams for this recipe, and then I'll just have a little tiny bit of starter left over that I'll keep in the fridge for the next time I wanna bake. I mean a little tiny bit of starter. It's just clinging to the jar. This really works though. The next time I wanna bake bread, I'll just feed that the night before I wanna bake, and it'll be ready in the morning. Now for the rest of the ingredients. There's just two left. Add the 450 grams of bread flour into your water and starter mixture, and then add the 10 grams of salt right on top of the flour. Now for the actual mixing. Grab a bowl scraper or a wooden spoon or something and just mix everything together until there aren't any dry bits of flour left. So once a dough basically starts to form, that's when you'll be able to move on to the next step. Let's speed up this mixing, shall we? Once your dough looks like this, we are now entering the bulk fermentation stage. We've mixed our starter with the other ingredients, so the dough is starting to rise. We're going to do a few things during bulk fermentation, but the first thing is cover your dough and just let it rest for 30 minutes. After that 30 minute rest, your dough is going to be a lot easier to work with. That's basically why we do the rest in the beginning. Now you're going to do the first set of what they call stretch and folds. A stretch and fold is basically you take the edge of the dough, stretch it up as far as you can, and then fold it over the dough. Then you take the next edge, you stretch it up as far as you can without ripping it, and fold it over that. Then you just go around the dough, grabbing an edge, stretching, and folding, and stretching, and folding, until you go around once, maybe even twice. I like to go around twice during the first set of stretch and folds, because right now the dough is really delicate, and this is going to create some strength in the dough, and just make it nice and smooth, and elastic, and that's exactly what we're looking for here. Keep going around the dough, stretching and folding two, maybe even three times around the dough. I think I went around three times actually instead of two. Oh well, just keep going until you're satisfied or tired of stretching and folding. Once your first set of stretch and folds is done, cover the dough up with a kitchen towel and let it rest for 30 minutes before you come back and do this again. For the second set of stretch and folds, the dough will feel a lot smoother. Because of the rest period and our stretching and folding last time, everything's just going to be a little bit more elastic, stretchy, and smoother. So just go around the dough, stretching and folding a second time. This time just go one time around the dough. You're going to do three sets of stretch and folds in total, so it's a good idea to just be a little bit more gentle each time you do it. So on the second set, just go around the bowl once. The reason you want to be a bit more gentle is because the dough is rising during this bulk fermentation period. The dough is puffing up with air, with CO2 gas, and so as that's happening, you really don't want to pop any of those air pockets, so just be a little bit more gentle each time you stretch and fold. Once you're done, cover the dough up and wait 30 more minutes. A half hour later, you are now ready for your third and final set of stretch and folds. Just do the same thing you did each time before this, but being even more gentle. Once your last stretch and fold is done, 
you're just going to cover your dough up and let it rest for the remainder of the bulk fermentation. Five hours is usually what works for me, but it might take less time or more time depending on the temperature of your kitchen. So since it's already been an hour and a half since I've mixed the dough, I'm just going to let this rest for three and a half more hours. Three and a half hours later, my dough seems to be ready to go. See, it's a little bit jiggly, and it's definitely delicate to the touch, which means it's filling up with air, and that's a good sign. It's time to pre-shape the dough. I'm going to be shaping my dough into a batard or an oval shape today, uh, but no matter what shape you want to do, it's good to pre-shape your dough into a ball. So just flour part of your counter, and then kind of stretch and fold the dough again in the bowl, just to release it from the sides of the bowl. It's easier to take it out that way. And once your dough is completely unstuck, carefully scoop the dough with your hand out onto your floured counter. Make sure to keep the seam side on top. We want to have a floured side on the bottom and the seam side on top. So to pre-shape this dough into a ball, it's going to look very similar to stretching and folding. Just grab a corner of the dough, pull it up over the center, grab the next edge, pull it over the center, and keep going around the dough until you have a kind of tight ball of dough that you can easily flip over onto the clean part of your counter. Once all the corners are tucked in, just pick up your dough with both hands and carefully transfer it so it's seam side down on the clean part of your counter. Then magically clean all the flour off of your counter with your bench scraper and you have a nice clean surface to work with. You're basically going to just create some tension in this ball of dough, tightening the corners with your hands like this. Just keep cupping and pulling the dough with your hands until you have a nice smooth round ball of dough. Some people even like to use their bench scraper as kind of an extension of their hand, just cupping and pulling that way with a scraper. Do whatever you want to do. Once your dough looks like this, just cover it up and let this rest and relax for 30 minutes before we give the dough its final shape. While the dough is resting, go ahead and grab whatever you're going to be using as your proofing basket. I'm using this oval banneton basket. If you don't have one of these, these are really good to use for sourdough. I'll have a couple of links in the description where you can get these in different shapes. Then sprinkle your basket with some kind of coarse flour. I'm using rice flour. That's a trick that everyone says helps the dough from sticking. I didn't used to think it would help that much, but it definitely does. It's the best flour to use on a banneton basket. If you don't have rice flour, use just any kind of flour so that the dough doesn't stick to the basket. Then 30 minutes after you pre-shape your dough, you're ready to give it its final shape. I'm going to be shaping this now into an oval shape or a batard. I actually have a playlist of videos showing you how to shape sourdough into different shapes. You can check that out. I'll link to it in the description as well. Just flour the top of your dough and flip it over onto your counter. And then just kind of form this into sort of a rectangle, being very gentle with the dough. You don't want to pop too many of the bubbles. Once you've got a rectangle, you're going to fold one side of the dough up and over the middle, just like you're folding a letter. If you do that anymore, I know most people just send emails, but fold it like a letter. Then take the other side of the dough and fold it up over the center. Then press down the seam in the middle, like this. And then you're going to tuck and roll your dough. So grab the top, tuck it over, and roll. Tuck and roll. Tuck and roll. Just keep tucking and rolling. You're creating tension in the top of the dough as you do this. That's what we want. And then you've got your basic oval or batard shaped dough. I like to take this a step further and create some more tension in the dough. Grab the flap at the top and pop those bubbles while you're at it. Grab the flap at the top of your dough and tuck it underneath the dough. You can take your bench scraper and tuck it under a little bit tighter. Then flip the dough over on the other side and you're going to grab the flap and tuck that under the dough as well. And just do the same thing. Tuck it under, make sure everything's tight. If you haven't seen my video about getting an ear on your sourdough bread, go ahead and check that out. That's basically what I'm doing here. I'm creating a lot of tension on the top of the dough with my shaping method and with my bench scraper here. And that tension going from side to side is going to help the dough bust open tomorrow when I score it and bake it, and that's going to look really cool. So just take your banneton basket, which is of course lined with flour, rice flour in my case, flip your dough over so it's now seam side up, and you're going to let it proof upside down in the banneton basket. For this recipe, I usually move my dough to the fridge where it proofs overnight in a cold environment, and I get really good results that way. So just move your dough to the fridge, no need to cover it up with anything, and this will be ready to bake the following day. 
The next day, at least 30 minutes before you're ready to bake, preheat your oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit with the Dutch oven inside. When the oven's preheated, remove your dough from the fridge. Now you need to transfer your dough onto some parchment paper, so cut a piece of parchment paper that's a little bit bigger than your dough. Then carefully flip the dough out onto the parchment paper right side up, just like this. The rice flour I used really helps this dough not stick to the basket. If you used a different kind of flour, you might have to ease it out of the basket with your fingers. Then take your hand or a little brush if you have one and brush off the excess flour from the top of your dough. The final bread will look a lot better if we brush off this excess flour now. Now it's time to score the dough. You can use a really sharp knife for this, but a razor blade on a dough lam like this is a lot better. So take your blade and put it at a shallow angle, and I'm just going to slash the dough from one end to the other end, just like this. You can really do any design you want when you're scoring, but I like this simple slash technique. It allows the dough to open up really nicely when you bake it. And when you slash the dough like this, you get to look inside of the bread. You can see some tiny fermentation bubbles. That's a really good sign that this bread is going to be delicious. Now that the dough is scored, it's time to transfer it carefully into your Dutch oven. So just take your Dutch oven out of the oven and pick up your dough on the sides of the parchment paper. I just like to transfer the parchment paper and the dough into the Dutch oven altogether. Just carefully put it in there without touching the sides of the Dutch oven. Those are still hot. You're going to pop the lid on and put this inside of your 500 degree oven and bake for 20 minutes. When the 20 minute timer hits, it's time to reveal your oven spring. You're going to take the lid off and check just how much your bread has puffed up in the oven during the first half of the bake. So as I take the lid off here, I see that my bread has really puffed up and exploded nicely, especially along that score line. It's got a nice ear. That's why I like the simple slash. Now with the lid off, continue baking this for another 15 minutes. And this is what your bread should look like when it's done. If you want it darker, just keep baking longer than 15 minutes, but remember to let this cool down before you slice in. A couple hours later, and this is what my bread looks like on the inside. I'm going to speed up the slicing just so you can get to the crumb a little bit faster. Thanks so much for watching this video about how to make good sourdough bread. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to learn how to make better bread, sourdough, and pizza at home, consider subscribing to the Grant Bakes YouTube channel. I've got new videos every single week. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you in the next video.